Matrix before uh, before the the truce that's established at the end of Matrix Revolutions. Um, this this guy doubts the evidence of his senses. I mean, he recognizes something is wrong, but since the Matrix is everywhere, in a sense, it's seemingly impossible to know. So, you know, th- I mean, this is why Neo says that everything must be, you know, you must risk everything. Um, and everything has to be let go of. You know, the, the Matrix only has you if you are attached and humanity, yet again and again through through this series, it proves its resilience in its uh, pursuit uh, of freedom. But uh, but yeah, essentially the uh, he feels like an outcast. I mean, he goes to to high school. He's like a, like a skater kid, and um, and one thing you'll notice that uh, to set himself apart, maybe he did this himself. I don't know. But his his locker is a different colour than everyone else's. You know, normally in uh, school lockers are sort of like red or dark red. His is like, you know, very pale blue. <laughs> you know, but um, again, as similar to Neo's uh, uh, disconnection uh, scenario, how he was unplugged, he's warned via a mobile, uh, mobile call uh, that warning him that uh, and it's basically Neo on the other on the other end of the line. It's basically saying that you know they're after you. You got to get out. And looks out the window and sees agents pull up outside the school. So agents chase him through the uh, through the corridors while he's on a skateboard. Um, and essentially, he, be, he manages to get to the roof, but the angels uh, the angels the agents uh, corner him there. And it's then that he realizes what he has to do and he take i mean he takes what is what could be termed a leap of faith because the last that his last words in the matrix are neo i believe i know it wasn't a dream and essentially it's it's almost like he his dreams were a prophecy of what he was about to do because you know the the dream sequence um, turns out to be exactly what happens as he just does a, a sort of like a backwards dove dive out of a um, off the uh, off the roof, and uh, just before he hits the ground, blackout. You know, so and then he, um, you know, he, he just lets himself fall. You know, just um, just like his dream. And uh, and he wakes up just before hitting the ground. This time, for real. And um, and kids uh, jump from the roof was his act of sacrifice. You know, I mean, this is the price he had to pay to know the truth. You know, and it, and it's. I mean, it kind of reminds me of the uh, the Tyler Durden quote when he said that uh, only after death can you be resurrected. Only after you've lost everything are you free. To do anything, you know. Um, but uh, but just after that, we see a funeral uh, being held for him. But but ironically, we uh, you know what is heard um, through some of the dialogue at the funeral is that uh, apparently they deal with a lot of similar cases of kids apparent seemingly not being able to handle reality. So. This possibly alludes, I mean, it, this might just be him citing, you know, uh, statistics for, uh, you know, um, psychological distortion in, teen, in teenage males in this, you know, in this part, that part of the world. But it might, uh, it possibly could allude to, I mean, I don't think they included it if they didn't want to possibly allude to the fact that, you know, uh, Michael Popper was not alone in the fact that he could see something severely wrong with the world. I mean, you know, just just go through Morpheus's speech uh, towards the beginning of of the first Matrix film. You know, the how you um, you see you start to see lies everywhere. You start to see things not adding up, and you doubt um, whether your senses are actually lying, uh, telling you the truth or not. 
you know, are, are my senses lying? How do I know that my senses aren't lying? And they, they, I mean, these are the questions that he was asking himself. And uh, and after after we see um, see the funeral sequ- sequence, we see uh, you know the uh, the kid wake up in the real world, and uh, you know Neo and Trinity are standing over him, and you actually hear Keanu Reeves and uh, and Carrie Ann Moss's uh, voices as Neo and Trinity, and uh, and she she says that uh, that self she thought self substantiation wasn't possible. And essentially, what uh, what we find is that uh, by by risking everything, by effectively taking his own life, he was able to disconnect himself from the matrix. He saved himself. He didn't need external aid to unplug him. He didn't need a red pill. His actions were his red pill, you know, and. Um, but uh, but it, it's it's weird that despite saving himself, he still attributes his salvation to Neo. You know, very much like a lot of the exiles that we see towards the beginning of the Matrix Reloaded. Uh, we see, you know, Neo has almost achieved a sort of messiah, um, a messiah persona, because a lot of people feel so so enamoured with him because he's he's unchained them from from slavery um but yeah i mean i'd say i'd say this this short film is sort of like a tribute to all the people who didn't require anyone else to uh to save them or to or to open their eyes but they opened their own eyes so tell you what in in reference to the zeitgeist movement Hands up, who introduced themselves to the Zeitgeist movement? Yep, my hands up as well, guys. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's strange that he was um, the uh, the power of compliance is what is required to keep someone in the matrix. You know, I mean, uh, obviously some. As Morpheus said, most people are not ready to be unplugged, but some of them are, and so ready, in fact, are they to be unplugged that they manage to unplug themselves. Now, one of the things that um, that I that I've kind of thought about is uh, what was he able to unplug because you know maybe his state of mind at the time of death was was so much so that he willfully sacrificed the real world and thus there was no recourse but to disconnect him and thus he was able to wake up in the real world or um whether he was a uh, whether he did very much like his dreams did and he always woke up just before he hit the ground i mean that that's i mean i'd say that kind of is probably the most likely one that i would uh, that I would agree with, because it um, it so closely uh, you know parallels with his uh, with his dream that uh, that he wakes up before he hits the ground. But um, but yeah, it's it's strange how some people originally uh, originally think that uh, that people can't wake themselves up; they have to be helped up. When in fact, you know, one of the one of the things that Neo has to keep telling, um, you know, both both the the character Michael Popper and also the other exiles that he saved is that uh, that he did not save them; they saved themselves. And and I suppose even if you even if you do have, you know, help in the awakening process, it really is your your complete choice to to awaken or not. And the uh, and the baggage of that is something that is alluded to in the next short film. So I will move on from Kid's story, which is a, um, a, it's one of my favourite favourite parts because I think it does speak to me a lot by the fact that it is a self directed awakening. But the uh, but the next short is called Program. Uh, this short isn't actually canon. Um, it's uh, I'd say probably the term that is uh, that 
most closest resembles this is uh, fan fiction. But it is endorsed fan fiction because it is included in this uh, in this collection of short films. Uh, it opens with the character Sis. <coughs> And she's uh, training in the construct on her, what's known as her favourite simulation. It's sort of like a, a um, an ancient samurai uh, war, um, battle. Um, and she's joined by uh, by one of her other a member of her crew called uh, called Duo, and they uh, they start sparring. Uh, and then Duo then begins to allude to the regret of taking the red pill. And thus turning one's back on all you've known. Um, but uh, but when it's... I mean, this is something that is... It, it's an interesting point, especially when you consider it in, in the context of the Matrix uh, universe. That, uh, that when you sacrifice one realm for another, when you, when you decide to take the red pill and say, I want to know the truth... Wherever it may lead, it doesn't matter to me what I have to give up. I want to know the truth, even if that means giving up reality, which, as it as it turns out, is the case. Uh, it's understandable to question whether that was a wise choice. You know, I mean, however, unlike uh, knowledge, which uh, you can give up, uh, give up on in favour of ignorance, there's a much higher cost to betraying reality uh, since humanity in the Matrix franchise, humanity is at war. So there's, I mean, I, I mean there, there is a sort of parallel to that when we consider how uh, the activist community can, um, can fall under this kind of thing where, you know, I mean... No, I mean, being an activist is definitely stressful. I mean, I won't lie. I mean, I definitely won't lie on that, on that, uh, that point. And and this is something that's explored a lot in the uh, the first Matrix film with the character Cipher, because uh, I mean, he does sort of hint at it to begin with when uh, when he says, "Why oh why didn't I take the blue pill?" He said, "I mean, my guess is that he's he knows because." The, the character Cypher said this to Neo like shortly after he came aboard the Nebuchadnezzar um, but uh, you know uh, my guess is that he was trying to see whether Neo is completely solid in his uh, conviction that he did make a good choice in uh, in taking the red pill but uh, but eventually with uh, with Cypher it got to the point where you know in order to be able to be reinserted back into the matrix he had to betray his ship his crew and his captain and also zion as well he had to you know provide uh, agent um, agent smith with uh, with the you know the access codes to zion so obviously betraying the real world and wanting to go back to the matrix it isn't you know, it isn't just like, uh, oh, you know, I used to be in the zeitgeist movement, but, you know, it just got too frustrating. I, you know, nothing, nothing was being done. So I just decided not to care anymore. It's, it's not, <laughs> it's not like that. Cause I, I've known, I've, I actually know some people who've, uh, who said, yeah, I used to do, do, to do all that, but I just gave up. You know, I, I just, I just couldn't deal with it anymore. I, you know, I just don't care anymore. I know some people who've done that, um, but obviously with this sort of thing, the price is higher. And um, but Duo further presses her uh, by saying that he is going back and he wants her to join him. And he even goes as far as saying her choice is made and she must return with him. I mean, this is all the time they're they're fighting. Uh, well, that they seem to have gone from sparring like morphing into fighting now. Um, but yeah, he says that, uh, you know, that, that the operator won't hear her. He's cut off, uh, communication. So they're basically stuck there now. And, uh, the choice has been made and, uh, you know, she, she doesn't have a choice. You know, the only, the only, you, you've only got two choices. You can come back to the matrix with me and go back 
um, go back to uh, back to a comfortable life in the country, or you will have to die. No one's going to hear you. Uh, so she has to defend herself, and eventually she has to. She like stops him, breaks the the end of his sword off, and stabs him with it. Um, but after she does that, it we we suddenly get uh, get revealed that it was all a test to assess her fortitude in in leaving the matrix behind in favour of reality, uh, which she passes with uh, with flying colours. But uh, but obviously she understandably punches Duo for subjecting her to the harsh trial itself. Um, but I mean that's that's essentially the uh, the short program. Um, what it alludes to, I think, is it's an interesting question of you know whether whether an activist actually can go the distance and whether they can actually illustrate. That uh, that they care and that they, you know, that they have the they have the minerals to to go through with it to to stay on stay on course no matter what what gets thrown at them if they if they just say look I'm just I'm just gonna go for it you know I'm not gonna I'm not gonna allow you know negativities to slow me down I uh, you know I. You know, because because this is this is a question that has popped up in my mind briefly uh, a few times, where you know I've just thought to myself, you know, it would be so much easier if I was just a mindless drone, just like everyone else. It really would be so much fucking easier, because it is it is difficult to care. It is difficult to especially be a zeitgeist movement activist because because uh, we advocate something that goes beyond the scope of the vast majority of other activist organizations the only uh, i mean there's there's only one uh there's only one movement or organization as it were that uh, that goes as far as we do and that's the venus project and you know the zeitgeist movement as you know originally existed as the activist arm of um of the venus project so you know it does um i think this this it is a it is a trial of uh, of how well an activist can deal with uh, whatever they have to they have to deal with in in their activism you know can you can you stay the distance will you become a cipher or not you know someone who just become sick and tired of uh, of all the fighting and just prefers i just want to have a quiet life you know but that's that uh the next the next short uh is a short called world record now again this isn't canon but it is a very interesting one because <coughs> besides kid story this is the only other story that features um, um, a, uh, a human being who's plugged into the Matrix and, you know, uh, born in the Matrix as well, um, who's able to, again, self-substantiate. But I'll get to that soon. It essentially opens with a narration that explains that um, how only only humans with a, quote, rare degree of intuition sensitivity and a questioning nature can uh can f- can free themselves from the matrix so obviously as you uh you know as you can tell it i mean th- i mean there's a i mean this kind of alludes to uh, what morpheus said during the uh the agent training program when he uh, when he said you have to understand most of these people are not ready to be unplugged and many of them are so in so inured so hopelessly dependent upon the system that they will fight to protect it so you got that majority of people who are essentially sheep and then you got like a small percentage who are actually ready and willing to be free and this is the story of uh, of one of them because there's you know um you know michael popper was able to self-substantiate by 
of effectively committing suicide. But uh, but this story it follows um, it follows a uh, a track athlete by the name of Dan Davis and um, and he's found that through running he's able to attain a feeling of true freedom and this is as we find that this is the way how he's he's able to you know start realizing that you know that there's something there's something more there's that there's a you know there's a there's a serenity that can be attained outside of the physical realm somehow and you know he feels that when he's running um but despite being at risk of causing himself a career ending injury and his previous world record being revoked due to drug use he insists on running again to uh, and I quote prove them wrong so during the race uh, he's being watched by i think four agents and despite and like halfway through the uh, through the race his uh, you know some of the muscles in his thigh rupture and you know he starts to to falter but by just sheer willpower alone he's able to continue and in fact you know overtake all the other um all the other runners and in doing so he starts to be able uh he starts to self substantiate he starts to you know uh, just like white out as it were and he actually uh is mostly disconnects it i think he i think the only uh, the only plug left in left in him in the pod is the uh, the plug in the back of his skull he he basically shed, like sheds himself of all the other plugs but uh, a sentinel uh, i mean this is this is back in the real world a uh, sentinel notices this and uh, and by using electrified restraints dan is thrown back into the matrix where you know his he's just completely exo- i mean he's just about over the finish line uh, by this point cuz uh, cuz i mean the, you know the agents tried to tried to uh, like grab him back by uh, by taking over the bodies of the the runners behind him but they weren't able to but uh, but he basically gets slammed right back into the matrix and his body just you know tumbles tumbles to the ground you know he's just completely exhausted and you know probably you know in a sense you know irreversibly damaged in a way because you know what would happen to the human brain if it were able to you know not just you know feeling the immense pain of several ruptured leg muscles but you know the um the adrenaline of running the uh the transcendent experience of self substantiation and then to be restrained and electroshocked back into the matrix you know that's really going to fuck you up isn't it so i mean understandably in the ne- in the next scene we uh we see um we see that uh, he's just in a wheelchair being pushed by a nurse his uh, memory of the race has been erased but it but again his indomitable spirit seems to uh, spirit well i say spirit in quotation marks guys um seems to even show through because he you know he starts murmuring the word free and he just gets up I mean, he, he falters a bit, but he is able to get up, you know. So it shows that uh, that he he definitely has a real um, a real ability, and you know, and maybe maybe it's part of uh, you know maybe a human physiological reaction to uh, to being you know enslaved in a neurological simulation like the Matrix. Maybe maybe humanity can, you know, keep evolving, considering the, uh, you know, the kind of situation it's in, you know. But uh, but that's that's it for uh, for that one, and, uh, and I really need to get on with these. Uh, the next short is called Beyond, and uh, this again, this one isn't canon, uh, but it is a very interesting one because I've noticed that uh, with that the matrix it subtly tries to explain away certain real life phenomena 
and link it to itself. Get, and because, like in the Matrix, in the Matrix world, you know, essentially, you know, different glitches or different things that are going on with the Matrix are used to explain certain things. And this this one sort of builds upon that idea. The uh, the story follows a teenage girl by the name of Yoko, whose cat has gone missing, and uh, essentially the um, it's it's set in uh, I think it's set supposed to be set in Japan, but uh, but they're English speaking. But it, it, I mean, it, it looks like Japan, and like this is you know the other one that looks like uh, Studio Ghibli uh, animations. But uh, you know, after asking some of her local residents, Yoko still can't find her cat, and uh, and some of the local local kids su- um, suggest that she should uh, go to the haunted house and have a look because they 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 think that uh, the cat is in the is in the haunted house. All right, and they all go to the house, which essentially is like a dilapidated building, and. Um, and what they what she finds and what they all find is that this building itself it contains numerous phenomena which defy the laws of physics yeah um i mean there's a uh, there's like you know shadows that don't necessarily correspond to their sources there's like light bulbs that disappear and reappear you know rain that comes from you know a clear sunny sky um, you know, some of the kids start like smashing bottles on the ground and then time seems to rewind itself you know, and, and reassemble the bottle. Um, and eventually they, uh, the kids find that, uh, that if they, there's like a open part of this, uh, of this building where like some of the floors have fall, fallen through and like the roof is partly exposed, um, <coughs> they, uh, they start throwing themselves off like the second story and just before they're about to hit the ground they stop and uh, and they just they just stay there you know it's, it's a bit like the uh, the scene in in Mission Impossible where uh, where he's like in that vault sort of that, that um computer room where he just like almost gets to the floor and stops but yeah it's it's just like that and they, and these kids don't even seem really uh put off by this sort of thing that they're, they're, they're just ha- they're having fun with it <laughs> um but um but yeah the agents obviously f- uh find this out uh and they send a uh like a truck uh we see a truck go through the town that seems seems like it's uh some sort of like rodent extermination um service but uh but upon arrival they forcibly just eject all the kids and yoko out um and then and and after that i mean you know she uh um yoko find, finds a cat um you know before the uh the exterminators get there and um but after they uh they force them all out uh we then see a sort of um uh sort of like command line interface so obviously this is like you know we're seeing it from uh the uh the machine's point of view as they're you know managing uh the matrix itself and um what we find is that all these different phenomena that that the kids call, called haunted and that we're playing around with we find they're actually just anomalies in the coding of the matrix itself and i mean it's it's interesting to think that you know in um in the uh, in the matrix world a ghost can be explained very simply by there being a, a residual um a residual signal of someone who isn't alive anymore but you know their some of their coding was uh was imprinted somewhere and they uh you know and they can yeah you know, and part of that coding you know it isn't complete it doesn't it the the coding isn't complete to f- to form a uh, a solid uh a solid organism but there's only enough coding to maybe create an apparition so you you can understand how it how it can be appealing for you know if you if you like the matrix films to sort of use that sort of idea to explain away ghosts you know 
Um, but yeah, essentially the, um, we see like, you know, the, uh, some sort of command saying that, uh, 